Hey guys, so this is the end of month Art Explained video. I'll be going over making watercolor backgrounds that I'll be inputting into my graphic novel that I'm in the process of blocking out now. I'm writing it with my friend Chris Simmons, and it's based on a story that kind of happened on my last trip to London. So this is how I plan to make all the backgrounds. I'm just going to show you three here, but if you're interested, let me know. I might record the rest because I'm going to have to make them anyway. If there's enough interest, I might just set up the camera and record them anyway. So stay tuned. I'll show you a few effects with the watercolors, and then I'll be dropping them into Manga Studio. You can see how I did that and not have to paint an entire panel, but necessarily the small parts and then input it in post. So stay tuned. So here we have uh, the main water well that I use. It's got three sections, and right here on the big section is pretty nice. It has these ridges so that you can brush the paint all out of your brush much more easily. And then it's got this section here to the side that holds three brushes, small, medium, and large. And it holds it just above the water line so that the water doesn't get inside and rot your brushes very easily. Um, it's a pretty neat little water well. I'd suggest getting one. Um, I got this at Michael's a long time ago, I think using one of the regular 40% off discounts. You know, you can get almost in every weekly paper. Uh, on the side it has these holes so that you can hold your brushes as well. Overall it's just a convenient water well uh, if you're looking for something like that. And here we have my water paper brick. Um, these are neat, I don't know if you've ever seen them before, but they're pretty regular here in France especially. So it's a bunch of sheets that have been glued together on the sides and here in the corner, one corner is lifted up so that you can get like a knife or a, something you finger in there to pull it all apart. And here we have paints that I'll be using. Um, those are the ones that I talked about in my other earlier video and just the various brushes that I'll explain as I go through listing everything. I uh, also have some salt here, which I'll use to add some effects to the wet paint and that's it. So on this first one here, I'm just going to be wetting everything. Uh, just, you know, a good even coat of water on top. And then I've opened the blue of the Colorex, or sorry, Ecoline. Colorex is a different brand of the same type of thing. Uh, some are called ink, watercolor inks, um, but they really react and do the same thing as just watercolor paints as well. So I'm just getting at decently even covering and then I'm starting to add water in to start separate that up and sort of give a cloud-like um, design to the top and here I'm just drying it of course with my blow dryer <laughs> for my hair. You always want to have one on hand and this is what it would look like once it's dry. You can see how the colors sort of soak into the salts. It's a very distinct design um, that you only get with adding salt. Now here I'm just doing paint, so this is a dark blue that I've made over on the side palette. I'm just going to get an even covering on a dry piece of paper. This paper is not pre-wet already, so I wanted it to take the color uh, pretty well on this first coat. And I'll be drying it here. You can kind of see how it becomes a bit more matte and lightens up in color. So I'll be going over it a few times with coloring just to get it darker. I'm going for a stormy, cloudy, you know, look to this whole background that I'll be using uh, later on in the comics. So again, just another layer of the same darkness. And now I'm using the big um, puffy brush. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. I'll put a link to where you can get one on the descriptions uh, to sort of give the cloud uh, design. Um, moving around the paint, also adding paint, darker colors directly on, only in certain areas. It's very much like a, um, a brush for makeup um, that girls might use, which I don't do any makeup, but I've seen them for sale. Uh, so it's the sort of, same sort of thing, is that you're just bringing it around uh, to get lighter and darker areas all over to get more cloud-like stars later. I'm putting down as much of the eco line coloring as I can because it's very dark and strong. You don't have to use the exact colors because you can change them in post, but as much as you can use the colors you want, the easier it will be on you. I'll be adding salt so you'll, I'll speed up the video so you can see how the salt really brings in the 
color into each cell granule. It's a very interesting design. I like it, but I'll, I'll be putting a wash over that as well because it's just, it, it gets a little light. And here I'm going to be using some white, but my white is all dried up. Um, this is a gouache, so it is not very see-through. It's not transparent really when you put it down. Uh, so I'm pulling it apart here and I'm just going to be using the paint because the paint is still perfectly fine. It's just dry. You know, watercolor paints you can use for a very long time as long as you have water around to bring them back to life. So I just pulled it apart here and we'll be using it. And this brush I'll be making the stars with. So with this action, you can just sort of put in stars in no particular order, of course, just tapping it a little. You don't want to fling it because it won't look the same. You're going for stars here. And here I'm using Manga Studio 5. Uh, it's a new program that I bought that I'm really starting to get used to. But here in the middle panel, you can see I've already scanned in all of my backgrounds. This is the Starry Night one we just did. And so I copy it, and then I'll bring it into the other file as a different layer. Um, and you might have to replicate it a few times so that you'll get it uh, uh, cover a whole area. Rather than enlarging, sometimes replicating and mirroring it can give you a better look. So you can see behind her there, it looks like a full length rather than what you saw before which was cutting it almost in half um, and on her then I just put a little white coloring so you could see her character on top of it it's not necessarily the coloring I'm going to be going for in Chancery but it's really just so you kind of see what this whole tutorial is trying to accomplish in the end so as you can see it's not super difficult uh, it just takes a little time and thinking of what ways you might use the backgrounds. So let me know what you thought of the video. If I should record the others or not, just let me know. Uh, if you're one of my patrons, thank you so much. This video is in part to all of you. Your names are going to be listed here at the end as always. And if you're interested in becoming one of my patrons, just check the link that I'll put here somewhere. Um, for even a dollar a month, you can help me out a lot and get first looks at all these kinds of things, put in requests for what these videos should be and more. So please just take a look. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you next month, mid-month, for the other Art Explained. Bye.